This video is going to take a look at an introduction to random variables as we attempt to identify and use the basic properties of these probability distributions. First, we need to make sure we understand the difference between discrete and continuous. A discrete random variable is a variable where the possible results are countable. Often we're interested in the number of things, such as the number of students or the number of successes. We can count those. That is discrete. That's different than a continuous random variable where the possible results are measured as any value in a line interval. Maybe how much time it takes to complete a task or the distance traveled. With continuous random variables, the identifying factor is we could get any possible decimal as a result. All right, with that in mind, let's define what a probability distribution is. What a probability distribution will do is assign probabilities to each value on a random variable. So for example, to the right here, I have different scores on a tolerance test from 0 to 5, and the probability a student scored that score. Notice the sum of all these probabilities will always add to 1, a probability distribution has a total probability of 1. With a probability distribution, we may be interested in calculating the mean or the standard deviation. With probability, we often will call the mean the expected value, what we expect to happen. And to calculate that, we'll find the sum of all the individual values times their probabilities. This is very similar to what we did when we had frequencies with weighted averages. For the standard deviation, we'll take the square root of the sum of the difference between the average and the data value squared times the probability. These formulas look a little complex, but really they're not too bad when we work through them one step at a time. So for example, with the scores and probabilities from the previous example, to find the mean, we'll first take all of our x values, or our scores, and multiply them by the probabilities, which are in the second column here. So 0 times 0 0.7 is 0. 1 times 0 0.13 is 0 0.13. 2 times 0 0.18 is 0.36. 3 times 0 0.3 is 0 0.9. 4 times 0 0.2 is 0.88. And 5 times 0.1 is 0.5. If we want to calculate the mean, remember the mean formula says it's the sum of all of the x's times the probabilities, or all those values we just found. So we'll add them up on our calculator, 0.13 plus 0.36 plus 0.9 plus 0.88 plus 0.5. We get an expected value of 2.77. If we want to calculate the standard deviation, the standard deviation formula is a little bit more involved. Recall the standard deviation is the square root of the sum of x minus the average squared times the probabilities. So we need to build this formula step by step, making a column for each part. First, x times the average. We just calculated the average to be 2.77. X is the score, so 0 minus 2.77 is negative 2.77. 1 minus 2.77 is going to be negative 1.77. 2 minus the 2.77 is 0.77, negative. 3 minus 2.77 is 0.23. 4 minus 2.77 is 1.20. And 5 minus the 2.77 is 2.23. Next, the formula wants to square those values. So we'll take each of those x minus mu values we found, and we'll square each of them. So 2.77 squared. Remember, when we square, we should always end up positive. 7.67. I'm just going to round to two decimal places. 1.77 squared is 3.13. 0.23 is 
0.77 squared is 0 0.59. 0 0.23 squared is 0 0.05. 1.23 squared is 1.51 and 2.23 squared is 4.97. We're almost done. We just have to take that value of x minus mu squared and this time we're going to multiply it by its probability. So we're going to take this last column that we just found and multiply by the probability column. So we have 7.67 times 0 0.07 is about 0.54. Again, I'm rounding to two decimal digits. 3.13 times 0.13 is 0 0.41. 0 0.59 times 0.18 is 0.11. And 0 0.05 times 0 0.3 is 0 0.02. And 1.51 times 0 0.22 is 0.33. And 4.97 times 0.10 is 0 0.50. And it says that we want the sum of all of that. The sum of the x minus mu squared times the probability of x means we have to add all of those together. So 0.54 plus 0.41 plus 0.11 plus 0.02 plus 0.33 plus 0.5 gives us 1.91. And the standard deviation is the square root of that number, the square root of 1.91, which is 1.38, approximately. Now, I was rounding to two decimal digits, so I probably lost some accuracy. But the important thing you see here is the process we walk through in order to find that standard deviation. This process is much easier if we do it on Excel. So let's take a look at how that works, making columns for each of the formulas. Here you see we've got the exact same setup. First, we're going to find the mean. Remember, the mean is x times the probability of x. So I can hit equals in the first cell, select my score, and multiply with Shift-8 times the probability. Notice when I select those cells, it calculates it automatically. And then I can grab that dot in the corner and drag it down to get all the individual x times the probabilities. Now if I want the mean or expected value, I just have to add all those x px's. So we'll say equals the sum, open a parentheses, and select each of those values. When I hit enter, we find our mean is 2.77. Now let's go after the standard deviation, which we find by taking x minus the mu, or x minus the mean. We'll hit equals and select the score. And since we want to keep the mean the same, we don't want it to scroll down. Let's just type it in, 2.77, enter. Now when I click that dot and drag it down, I get all of those values. Next, we took x minus mu and we squared it. The way we do that is we'll hit equals, select the cell next to us, and hit Shift-6 for the caret and the number 2, and that will square the value. What's nice about this is we don't lose the round-off error, so our answer is actually going to be more accurate. Grab the corner and scroll down. Next thing we need to do is we need to multiply that by the probability. So we've got the x minus mu squared, and we're going to multiply that by the probability of x. So we'll hit equals. Select the x minus mu times, select the probability, and when we hit enter, it gives us the value. Grabbing the corner and dragging down, 
gives us all of those values. Now we can find the sum by saying equals sum, open a parenthesis, and selecting all the data values. That gives us a sum of about 1.89. A little smaller than we had when we were rounding, we had 1.91, but that's just a round off error. To find the standard deviation then, we'll hit equals. And we just need the square root of that value, SQRT, open a parenthesis, select that value, and we hit enter. We get our standard deviation of 1.3, it's going to round to 1.38, which is the exact same thing we got when we did it by hand. Hopefully this video was helpful as an introduction to random variables and probability distributions. And now you should be able to identify and use those basic properties of the probability distributions.